Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle, getting out there, adventuring in the outdoors. Today we're going to be building a budget setup for the trunk here. I think we've got a pretty good design in mind and uh, I'm excited to show you. So let's jump right in. Want to give a little shout out uh, this company. It's called Fire Department Coffee or Firefighter Coffee. Uh, they sent me this big five pound bag of light roast coffee. Um, I wasn't necessarily thinking it was light roast, tasted a lot more like medium roast. I'm more of a light roast guy, so uh, it was okay. A lot of my friends that like medium or dark roast, kind of the, the more darker flavored coffee, uh, they really liked it. So go check this out if you like, uh, you know, dark roast sort of coffee. I think they make some good stuff and it's for a good cause. They support veterans, so go check them out. So I wanted to offer a little shop update. I've been starting to clean stuff up. Uh, I've had so much stuff laying around that it's hard to find a good place for everything, but I've been able to mount some things over here on the wall. So I've got a bunch of battery chargers, all my Hercules stuff kind of mounted up here too. So got a lot of batteries for all the Hercules tools that came from Harbor Freight. And so I like to keep those batteries charged as best as I can. And then this DeWalt battery is just here as well. I've got an oscillating tool from DeWalt that I use a lot right here. And I just haven't picked one up from Harbor Freight. And this one's been doing the job so far, but my goodness, have I used all of these tools on so many different projects. It's pretty crazy. So one thing I learned from Photo Runner, shout out to Photo Runner, is you can use these to blow dust, snow, things like that to make really cool B-roll for videos. So. I've been using that for, for that. You can also use it to blow snow off your car or just you know drying off your rig too. So these have a little rubbery tip here and this is really nice for blowing off your car when it's you know basically needing to get dried off without water spots when you're cleaning it and you're not gonna scratch the paint because it's rubber. So that's pretty clutch. And then I've got a couple of impact drivers here. So we've got uh, this half inch drive and then a 3 8 inch drive here. And then I've just got a couple other small drills here as well. So just your standard cordless drill. And then I've got like a baby cordless drill that's a little bit smaller, a little bit less power, but still really handy. Uh, my wife uses this one a lot just for small stuff around the house. And then I've got this baby impact driver as well. And then we've got this angle grinder here. This came in super clutch, uh, just cleaning up some metal, especially when I was cutting for my 35s. Um, I've slowly had to trim little bits and pieces here and there. And uh, so this right now has just a grinding wheel on it, but I've also got a cutting wheel for it. And this thing is awesome. Just runs off of one of these five amp hour Hercules batteries. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little skeptical when these came because I didn't know if like, you know, I've had these two DeWalt tools for a long time and they've been always my trusty tools. But what's great is having all these batteries accessible, having these massive batteries. Uh, I basically only grab my Hercules tools now. It's not really a question and I haven't run into any problems. Um, so I've been I, kind of on the side doing some remodeling work of our house. And so uh, I've been using for this for all that stuff too. I use it on the rig, I use it on the house. Uh, it just comes in really handy. I've also got this little powered 3 8 inch drive. Uh, I've been using this. It's really nice too because it's got the extended head. So they sell a couple of different sizes, but the extended head is really nice because if you need to turn a bolt somewhere in a really tight space and you don't have space to actually swing the ratchet, this, this is your tool right here. As you can also see, it's kind of mounted on this weird like wall system. I haven't painted it or done anything, but this is called a French cleat system. And what I've been doing is just mounting up a bunch of these because they're super modular. You can build whatever you want. So I just kind of built this screwdriver holder here, but this is kind of a waste of space, honestly. But I wanted a really nice way to organize all these tools. So I built that, but these just hook in to the cleats. So what you do is you cut a 45 degree angle piece of wood on the one side, and then you just hook it in to a 45 degree angle piece of wood on the wall and everything can kind of just slide around. And it's just like another version of, you know, these hold 
uh, tool mounting panels, but I don't know. It's just so much better because you can mount all kinds of little things and you can easily move them around and I can build little mounts and brackets for stuff that just make it super simple to set stuff up. I wasn't seeing super easy ways to put these tools up on this and also just buying all the little hooks and everything. It's all right, but if you're changing tool types, um, I felt like, you know, what happens if I get more screwdrivers and I need to expand and it's pretty easy to just build new stuff here. So I don't know, tomato, tomato, but I've really liked how this has been working. And then we've got the whole lineup down here, all my jacks. So shout out to Harbor Freight too for sending a lot of these jacks over the last couple years. I use their stuff for absolutely everything. Like you guys know how much DIY I do. I mean, the only thing that I've really hired out to be done on the Forerunner has been alignments and doing my body mount chops. Other than that, I basically do everything myself. And so uh, these all really come in handy. And then last but not least, the big three ton jack. This thing is a total beast. Yeah, go and grab some of these tools. Highly recommend them. I use them all the time. In addition to that though, we've got a couple other tools from the Hercules line I've been using a lot. This is a game changer. Having a wireless uh, Sawzall or whatever they call these, a reciprocating saw, these are the bomb. This is so easy that you just put metal blades on the end and who cares if you go through the metal blades, they're great for cutting bolts off of your rig, for cutting metal, whatever you need. If you're gonna make little brackets, you know, you grab this thing, you put your bracket in your vise, and you just cut away. They're super awesome, super easy to use. And uh, I don't know why this battery is actually on this thing. I don't run it with this small of a battery. I think you're supposed to run these with a five amp hour battery. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, we've got this circulating saw here too. This is what I've been using to build the platform for the Forerunner. So you'll see this saw a little bit more in the video, but Right now, what we're trying to do is build a budget platform or leveling system in the rear of the Forerunner because that allows us to level it out, create a good place to mount a fridge, and then also have a place to sleep if you're doing a solo setup. So let's keep on uh, moving with the video and I'm gonna show you basically how we're gonna build that. So, and also I wanna be you know real with you guys, I wanna be honest, but uh, this is a torque wrench that I got from Harbor Freight. This is actually my second one. So I bought one of these a little over a year ago. It's probably been a year and like three months or so. Uh, this is a half inch drive torque wrench. If you can believe it or not, I actually spent like $23 on this thing. It's ridiculous how cheap it is compared to like normal torque wrenches that you buy is like, you know, 60 to hundreds of dollars. Like to, you can kind of spend as much or as little as you want on a torque wrench. I bought this to just throw in my rig because I was like, on the off chance, I need a torque wrench. I'm just gonna carry a cheap one. I've got this torque wrench, and then I've got this small molly panel bag that's full of some mini impact driver level sockets. So I used these in my rig, and then I got my little torque wrench. But I will say this, so this is my second one. My first one completely broke, and I'm gonna explain why, and I'm gonna explain why I don't really care that it broke at all. So on the Land Cruiser, there was a couple of bolts that I took off completely wrong, and what I ended up doing is I ended up putting the end of this handle right here. What I did is I lodged it on the top of my jack, and I jacked on the torque wrench to try and loosen my bolt. Super unsafe, definitely don't do that, but I was in a pinch. I was really annoyed with some rusty bolts and that's what I did. And honestly, it's probably not a good use case of using a torque wrench like this, but it was the best that I had and I didn't have a pipe to slip over the end of this to get like good torque on it. Anyways, probably ended up putting like 300, 500, who knows how many foot pounds of torque on this wrench and it still held up. Shockingly, it worked for like another month after that, uh, but then something eventually broke in it. And so 
was a bit bummed, but I went back to Harbor Freight, just my local one. I didn't like call up corporate or anything so that they could pull an influencer deal for me. I talked to just some random dude and uh, he swapped it out for me. So the Pittsburgh line and the Icon line of their torque wrench stuff. And honestly, I think it's all their other tools have lifetime warranties. So literally walked in there, handed them the wrench and they swapped it out for a new one. So this is my new one. I just took off the plastic and here we are. So like I said, for 20 something bucks, it's pretty tough to beat this. And I use this thing all the time now. So what used to be or should have been just an old tool is now like a tool I use all the time. So anyway, yeah, just wanted to explain that. Not all my Harbor Freight stuff lasts, but this is why I like Harbor Freight. They stand behind their stuff and if it breaks, most of the stuff has pretty good warranties on it. And most of the time you won't even break your tools. So it's probably not that big of a deal. So here is the carpet we're gonna be using. Uh, you can buy it in different ways. You can buy it in like a pre-measured size from Menards, Home Depot, wherever your favorite hardware store is. This they also will sell on like the big roll. So it just kind of depends on how you wanna buy it. I like gray or black or some of the monochromatic colors because it just goes with the rig better, but feel free to pick whatever color you want. It's super thin and easy to work with. So all you do is you can cut it with a box cutter and then you spray your wood with glue and then we stick this to the wood. So you don't want the glue to spray directly on here else it'll soak into it and then it won't stick well. So you spray it on the wood. So that's the carpet we're gonna be using. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so we got the two bolts removed. We got that one removed right there. And then over on that side, we got that one removed. In the middle, there's kind of these tongue or, you know, spokes that fit through these holes and pull this tight. So you may have to pull a little bit, but once you uh, get those two bolts out, the whole insert should come out. All right, so here's the insert that we just removed from the car. We'll set that aside and then we'll pull out our makeshift leveling insert here. So we're going to use the board that's sitting on sawhorses right now, uh, but I just want to show you what's going on underneath this. So, so I built this a while ago just so that I could get by, uh, but basically the top part is 40 and a quarter and it is 43 inches wide. So you can fit up to a 40 inch deep piece of plywood and then, you know, 43 inches wide is the space between the wheel wells. Now, these pieces are a bit short and I just used these because these were scrap pieces of plywood that I had. We're gonna cut new pieces today and use those. Uh, but for now, what we need to do is remove these off of the bottom and then I'm gonna show you something that I think is gonna work really awesome. So let's get started. Grabbing a couple of my tools. Like I said, Hercules sells all these awesome tools. Harbor Freight was nice enough to send me them, but they really are nice. Okay, so what I'm doing is just setting this up as far to the left as I can. And then we're gonna mark holes to mount this up. So grab our permanent marker and I'm gonna mark on the carpet where I can drill holes. I wanna be careful not to move it. But I'm gonna mark the holes that are at the ends of the bracket. Now that we got our holes marked, we can drill some holes. All right, so I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing here. So I've got these, I forget what these kind of nuts are called, but they've got teeth on the one side to dig into the plywood, and they'll create a thread point for us in this spot 
on this piece of wood here. So this uh, inner diameter here is going to be 3 8 I'm using a 3 8 bit on this. And then a 1 inch for the flat washer. I'm going to use this just very gently on the back side so that we can countersink this washer so it doesn't get in the way of the sliding board underneath. So that's basically what we got to do now. What I'm going to do is drill these holes and just leave it for now. We'll come back and do this towards the end. But I needed to mark these holes before we took off the, the inserts on the bottom just so I knew where they were because you're going to want to install these before you install the boards on the bottom. So we'll set these aside and put this in here. Dust as much of that off as we can and let's flip this over. So I already built this top, but it's pretty simple. All you do is you cut out the 40 inch by 43 inch board and then you spray adhesive with this 3M spray adhesive. I'll show you the can. This is the stuff. Super 77 3M spray adhesive. You spray it on the wood, not on the carpet, and then stretch the carpet over the top of this. So I'll show you, we're gonna have a little pullout insert, but for now, just know that one side needs to be stretched the majority of the way, the other side just a little bit. Another thing I'm gonna note is actually just where these boards are located. I'm gonna mark those, because I kind of test fit these boards to fit. There's a little plastic ledge, so I'm just gonna mark those on there. Okay, so now what we need to do is Now what we need to do is we need to cut some plywood and then we're gonna cut, I think it's called melamine. We're gonna cut melamine boards to go on the very bottom. So let's start cutting those and then I'll show you how we're gonna assemble it all. All right, so <clears throat> I'm struggling to figure out exactly what size I should cut. Uh, but I think since this is the scrap of wood that I have to use, we're just going to do 28 and a half inches long so I can only cut a board out to 38 inches due to how the trunk is set up. So let me quick show you that. So if we look in the trunk here, if we come out to 38 inches, that will stop at this plastic. I want this space here to be able to reach under and pull on a board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna design this to come out just here. And then those lines that I drew on the sides, that was so that we could avoid our board being like on top of this plastic here. So it needs to be set in a little bit just so that it fits right. And then lastly, what we're gonna need to do is mark a couple holes so that we can bolt down to those threads. Let's bump this up a little. Those threads right there. So that was just a little bit of context to get this thing set up for the trunk. All right, for the sake of time, and since I have my table saw already set up, I'm going to cut this shorter board with my table saw, but you could totally make this cut with the handheld circular saw from Harbor Freight if you wanted to, but this will just make this go quicker so I can get this project done today. So the reason I like these is because the top is very slippery. I think it's going to work nice as a surface for a piece of wood to slide on. All right, so now that we have these cut, I'm gonna lay these out just to show you how we're doing this. So, this is the back side of the board. This is the front side here. We've got two of these for the sides, just like so. And then we'll have one in the middle, pocket screwed to the back. And I'm gonna explain my take on why to do this in a little bit. So this will kind of come out to here as well. I suppose I should mark that with my tape measure. 38 inches. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a board that will slide nicely over the top of this. I'm not quite sure what size to use 
but the max width here would be 39 and a quarter. We're gonna take a little bit of that off. So I'm maybe thinking two and a half inches. So what we'll do is we'll cut 39 and a quarter minus two and a half, so 34 and a quarter. And then that will slide on top of this underneath these. These are gonna go on the very bottom. So let's cut that board now, 34 and a quarter. All right, and this board we are going to cut with the Hercules saw. So what we're gonna first do is be careful always around the trigger because since these are battery operated, they'll go at any point. This is cutting one and five sixteenths away from the blade. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add gonna take one and five sixteenths away from our 34 and a quarter before we set our guide. So we've got 34 and a quarter minus one and five sixteenths. 34 and a quarter minus one and five sixteenths. All right, and then we'll grab our straight edge here. Should work just fine, any sort of straight ruler should do the trick. We're gonna clamp this in place. This is straddling the two, so what I'm gonna do is center this over the... It would help if the saw had a battery. and the max depth that we're gonna be able to have this is gonna be 28 and a half inches because that's the depth of our boards for it to slide on. So that's what we're gonna do. So now, got our insert. This is gonna be our table to work on. Okay, so now what I've done is I've just cut some little holes here. So I'm gonna drill my pilot holes. Uh, well, sorry, I've already drilled the holes. Now I'm gonna just drill the little countersink holes for the washers. So we've got our bit. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit out of there. How the nuts fit in there if we do that. Oh, perfect. All right, good deal. All right, now we've got threads to hold our fridge in. Let's do one little quick hit with the vacuum and then we will start assembling the bottom portion. Okay, so now I've got all three of these, they're cut to length. One was a little longer. I just cut it to the, be the same length. So just use a chop saw to do that. It's not too crazy. Uh, what we're gonna do now is I gotta cut some plywood to go above these pieces. And I'm gonna use the same exact plywood that I'm using for the slide. Uh, that's pretty important. So let's cut those pieces and then we will put these pieces onto the plywood and we'll be done. So let's cut those now.
We're going to cut those at two and a half inches wide. That gives us an inch and a half of space for the boards to slide on these pieces. All right, so now we've got these two pieces cut and these are gonna be the shims that go underneath these whiteboards so that we can slide that in underneath. I wanna run these the entire length so that they go on both of pieces of carpet. If you do a better job of me and you cut a longer piece here, this could probably be shorter. At this point, it's kind of just personal preference how you build the rest. So I'm gonna cut this to probably 37. Eh, maybe I'll go the full 38, just cause this is gonna go out to the end. So cut these now with a chop saw to 38 inches, and then I'm gonna cut one big piece to go right there. Okay, back piece probably is supposed to be 34 and a quarter wide. We'll double check, 34 and a quarter. Okay, and then how deep do we want this to be? We've got 28 and a half inches there. Probably cut this piece to be the difference. Which is nine and a half, nine and three ace. All right, we'll do nine and three ace. So we've still got this leftover piece. That's the same width as our insert. So we'll use this. This could be cut pretty easily with the circular saw, but I'm just gonna cut it on the table saw, just quicker. Since we're keeping the stuff on the other side of the blade, you've gotta include the width of the blade in your measurement. All right, so that piece fits there nicely. I like how that's looking now. What we've got is We've got our two sides here with the melamine, and then this part's gonna be floating underneath it. So now we need to cut a bit of melamine for the back. And I've got some more scraps. Hopefully they're enough. These pieces aren't quite as important, but I'd like them to set up in there sort of nice at least. So uh, we need two pieces that are the same width as this board. So I'm just gonna rip them in the table saw since I've got my guide already set. So these are basically just shims. So I don't really care if there's a crack in them. No one's gonna, no one's gonna know, but you and me. Oh, wow. What have I done? Oh, shoot. Well, bad math on my part. They don't fit quite right. Shoot. Uh, I was overly confident. That's what happens. Um, well, I think we'll be okay. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. No one will know but us. So I need to take half an inch off of this board here. Alrighty, so now we've got this all laid out nicely. Basically what we need to do is just set this stuff up on here like this. And this piece here isn't gonna sit quite perfect, but it is what it is. This one will stick here like this. And then we're gonna put some pocket screws on this so it'll floating, floatingly lay in there just how we want. So first of all, I'm just gonna throw a couple screws in this to hold it down. And then we're gonna smack marks on where we need to drill holes for the bolts to hold this sucker in place. Okay, so let's grab a couple screws. Okay, so now we've got that good. Let's take this stuff off and test fit this in the trunk. Just gonna put the bolts 
back into their holes and slam it so that we kind of have a location where we need to drill. So I'm gonna quick hop up here, put these in just like this. in an effort to get a more level hit on these bolts. I'm gonna shim the sides. There we go. So now we know how far to push it forward. Okay. And then, there we go. Check for square on the back. I think right here's about good. All right. All right, we're lucky that made a nice indent and we'll drill holes there. All right, so it's probably hard to see, but let's see if it will capture it. See that indent? Try and adjust the camera. So we're gonna drill a hole right there, kind of outline the sides of it. There's the head. So we're gonna do our best to drill a hole inside of there. Now in the past, here's the bolt that we're gonna be cutting with. Here's the bolt size for that hole. In the past, I've made the mistake of just matching the size, but I'm gonna drill it a little bit larger and put a big washer on the top because it's a little bit tough to get this to line up perfectly. All right, got a 5 16 bit. Drilling our hole. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is prep this piece of wood to go onto the uh, piece right here. It's just gonna be a little support, nothing too fancy. So if you've ever seen these Craig jigs before, you just set them to the thickness of your board, clamp them down and drill some holes. So we grab this clamp these will put in two, two holes close together. I don't quite want that, so I'm gonna spread it out and just drill one hole per side. Other thing you have to do is you have to set the Craig jig to be the correct depth. So you come in here in the little box with the little Allen key and you set it to the correct depth. So slide it down to three quarters. That's ready to go. Just gonna set that aside. Gotta do one other thing here. So pull this my way a little bit. All right, so we're gonna test fit our piece of wood here. And also drill a couple holes in it. So it's kind of hoping it would fit just like this. So, fits good, that's what we like. Now I'm gonna pull this out. I think this will loosen up over time. At least that's what I'm telling myself, hoping it will. Okay, so now I just wanna drill a couple holes to make a bit of a handle. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right. Do as I say, not as I do. Look how horrible those front handles look. All right, we're gonna cut them a little bit wider because mess that up big time. Jeez, six 
and a quarter to 13. So this is the side that faces downward and it's the smoother side so it should slide better against the carpet. Get this all dusted off. Okay, so we got the handles done. They're okay, they're not perfect. That's okay. I still have to take this insert out and just put like a, a, sta a coat of like lacquer or some sort of poly on it so that it stays a little bit more durable. So for now, I'm happy with it. Let's get this pushed in. If it's a little tight, that's okay. And it's just gonna kind of float as a support. So I, I think this should work, but I'm, I'm not certain on this tactic, so. We're just gonna try it out and comment down below and I'll probably comment at some point later how well this works. And if not, just comment and I can respond to your comment on how well it works. So I'll link the Craig jig down below if you wanna go get one. I'm using two inch long Craig screws, which they have like a head on them, which helps to uh, pull in that hole a little bit better. There we go. All right, hopefully that holds. Let's put this in the trunk. Let's see how it fits. And then I'll show you the hardware that I just got from the hardware store, $6 worth. And that's what we'll use to hook this in to those stock thread spots. And then also hooking up the slide for the fridge. We've got two 70 millimeter long M6 by one bolts. These are what we're gonna use up front there to hold those two spots. And then I've doubled up some fender washers here, which are quarter inch in the middle. And then overall, they're one and a quarter inch. So I've got two of them on each one. And we've also got two little baby lock washers, which we're gonna put on top of that. So these don't vibrate out going down the road. For the slide, what I got was grade eight hardware. These have a five sixteenths by one and a quarter fender washer for each. And these will bolt into these plywood nuts that I have, which I believe are five eighths or three quarter deep with a five sixteenths 18 thread. So this is the hardware we need. Now we're gonna try and attempt at threading these into the factory holes. All right, so these were 70 mil originally, but I had to go back to the hardware store and get 80 mil. The other ones had a smooth shaft for part of it, and then the threads were at the end. These are threaded all the way. Probably better anyways, but just so you're aware, this needs to get pulled in slightly. Okay, so got it all bolted in. All right, and then got the slide here. This fits pretty snug, which I like. But see how we left that gap underneath here? You can grab it, kind of yank it out. This is about how far you can probably go with it, uh, but I would probably only pull like 12 inches out or so. So it'll at least come to the edge of your tailgate bumper area here. It's just a nice place to set coffee or something. So figured if we're gonna build a little shim up there to level it out, might as well add some uh, sort of slide or something. 
if you're going to put drawer slides under there, I don't think it's tall enough. So basically what we've done is stacked three pieces of three quarter inch plywood, melamine, etc. So, but I like how that turned out. We'll pull that out and put some sort of protective stuff over the top of it. Now let's grab the slide. So the slide's gonna go right here, pull up on this. Now I just gotta kind of find where we put our holes and thread our bolts through. So hopefully these are a good fit. I think we should be good. So I'm just gonna put them all in loose to start. So I hammered those in earlier, but these will tighten down real nice once you tighten down these bolts. So now I'm gonna just grab uh, one half, I presume these heads are actually uh, combo wrench so that I can get past the slide. Not really sure how tight to go with these because they're, they're pulling against the plywood so you don't have to be too crazy. There's a lock in the middle. And then it comes all the way out to here. Those screws clear everything just fine. Got to fix the bumpers on this. That's why there's so much play in it. But that should be pretty easy. All right, now let's grab my fridge. We'll set it in here, kind of show you how this whole thing works. All right, well, Set Power sent me this fridge a little while ago, and we've got this nice cover on it. So as you can see, there's openings here for the vents. I'm putting the temperature controls and stuff up in the front here where the power plug would go, just because I'm not gonna really mess with it that much. And I want this to open this direction, so this is how the cover works. Unhook this and then unzip these just like this. And then you can get at these to open up the fridge. So I reviewed this fridge maybe a year ago. Set Power sent me it and it's basically been my go-to fridge because it's on the smaller side and haven't had any problems with it. It's pretty slick. So this is their proprietary slide for it and their cover as well. And then up front here, we've got a little pouch. So, and then if we pull the little handle here, we can slide it in and there it goes, just like that. So it does get pretty close to my fire extinguisher over here. So I maybe need to move that. Well, I really like this setup because now basically what we've got here, we've got a budget fridge and there's slide and cover, which I really like. This is gonna do really well. And we've got our pullout right here, which that actually fits in there even more snug now that we've got this all good to go. I only use three quarter inch bolts, so they shouldn't hit this piece of wood at all. If we pull it out here, I'm not seeing any scratching, so we should be good to go there. So if we just pull this out, we've got this little work surface here, we've got this little pouch on the end, which is pretty sweet. We've got my whole setup here. And remember, if I want to take out the fridge, it's just gonna be those four bolts. And then the nuts will stay there at all times, which is really awesome. This is my little magnetic light I use for a bunch of stuff. The awesome part is this isn't steel, this isn't aluminum. So these fit. So this will plug into it really nicely. Haven't charged it in a little while, uh, but other nice thing here is look at how much space we have next to the fridge. 25, 24 inches, which is exactly what I wanted because my big Agnes sleeping pad, the one that's my favorite, that orange one, it's a 24 inch wide by 78 inch long. So six and a half feet by 24 inches will fit here perfectly. And then I'm gonna give you a little example of folding up the seats up front just to show you how this is all gonna fit together. So if we look at this space behind the seat, the 40% seat, uh, the fridge lines up with it almost perfectly. So that's pretty slick. If you're looking as tall as this power supply here though, you're not gonna have enough space to sneak it behind it. So it's a little unfortunate. The EcoFlow battery is pretty wide. So with the height of the EcoFlow battery at 12 inches, we've got 12 inches high, it's roughly seven inches of clearance here. So I don't remember the exact dimensions of the Blue Eddy, but that might fit back here. We'll have to do a little test fit of that. 
uh, but I don't really plan to use this front, this back seat here since I don't have like a kit or something. So uh, I will just plan to keep it folded down because I like having the space next to my head for storing some other gear or a power supply, etc. And here's another little angle of the seat, you know, with it folded up for if you wanted somebody to be able to sit next to your system or your bed laid out here. We can easily set it right here, just like that. And it's basically right in line with the fridge, which is pretty sweet. And the top of this, since it's flat, we could set another battery on top of it, or we could also probably figure out some sort of shelf here, or you could just set your phone or whatever on top of it while it's charging. If we look on the back side of the drawer slide here, these are tie downs for the actual slide, so we couldn't use those. You could maybe drill some holes on this side here and use it as a way to tie down the battery. Might be an option. Alrighty, let me put the battery here and then I'll show you kind of just a couple more dimensions. All right, so with a sleeping bag laid out here, just to kind of give you a perspective on the setup, we've got with the battery here, which is roughly 10 inches wide, up until we hit, hit the back of this seat, We've got 28 more inches worth of space to work with here. So I'm sure you could stack more bins, put duffel bags, camera gear, whatever you want in this area right here. And then, like I was saying, we've got the whole setup back here. So this is gonna be 24 inches wide, maybe 25 inches. And then without removing the seat, you're gonna get about 66 inches of length here, which 67 inches almost of length which is kind of shocking, but yeah. So if you're five and a half feet tall or a little over, you could sleep here with the seat butt portion still in. But if you're six foot or taller, you're gonna have to remove that. That gains you about eight to 10 inches. So, and then we've got this, you know, roughly 12 inch workspace here for cooking on whatever. And then you can, you know, grab the fridge, pull it out. This is quite sturdy actually, so you can like pull your fridge all the way out and it's really not a problem. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, I enjoyed building this. It's kind of like a more budget version of getting a leveling platform, putting in a fridge, everything that you'd probably need if you're wanting to do some solo camping and kind of setting up the back. So I wanted to kind of show a setup that you could run with all these Molly panels. That would be pretty handy. And uh, I like this setup a lot. This is probably what I'm gonna run most of the winter. So I wanna thank Set Power for sending me the slide and the cover, I really appreciate their support. And I'm going to link these products down below. I don't think I have a discount code for you, but go check out their products. Been running this fridge for a while, it's definitely on the more affordable side. And I think it's really durable. It's got these nice handles and some other nice features that I really like. So I'll actually link that video too up in one of these top corners and you can go check that out. So thank you Set Power for supporting this video. Thank you, uh, Harbor Freight, for always supporting me with some of these tools. Got to use them and show you guys using them in this video. And then thank you to uh, Fire Department Coffee for supporting veterans and sending me some of that coffee to try out. So I appreciate all these companies' support that really helped this channel to keep on going. So if you've got any questions on this build, please feel free to comment or you know ask them down below. And I will catch you all in the next video.